Right, so we're now going to um, go into the architecture development iteration. And really that means moving away from the architecture vision down to the business architecture, information systems architecture, and technology architecture space. Now there's a, re a repeatable pattern which is going to occur across there. And one of the things that you need to understand before you get into that repeatable pattern is the concept of stakeholders' views and viewpoints. Um, so we're going to elaborate a little further on that within this topic. This concept of a stakeholder is really referring to anyone in your organization who has an interest on the outcome of this architectural effort. And stakeholders would vary from your C-level individuals right down to project managers, down to a janitor, for example, who might be impacted by some of the changes that you're going to uh, cascade throughout the organization. So really, it's, you know, it's not just relevant to the people who are paying for the project to be executed. It's relevant to all the touch points, all the stakeholders that are involved. So that's what we mean by a stakeholder within an organization. And within this phase, what you have to do, or in with each of the phases as you're going around the architecture development iteration, is to try and get an understanding of what each of those stakeholders are worried about. And we refer to that as a stakeholder concern. It's not a requirement. So I could have a concern about um, the, the high churn rate of my key staff in an organization. That may result in a requirement which would be to uh, address um, training and recruitment and or churn in an HR management system or through HR processes, whatever the case might be. But ultimately, my concern as a, as a let's say, a CEO is uh, keeping me awake at night is all about what um, my staff are doing, what, what, why they're leaving my business. Right? And that's the, those are the concern pieces that we're looking to identify. So we talk about concern-based architecture as opposed to just requirements-based architecture. Right, so just to elaborate a little on the views and viewpoints, as well as building upon our car analogy that we identified in Module 1, what you have is you have, let's take a vehicle, right, and you need to design a new type of SUV. And that SUV, you can see it standing on the floor in the factory in front of you. Now, you can look at it visually and you can see it, but it has a variety of different attributes which deal with different stakeholders. So for example, if I am the user, the eventual driver of that SUV, I have a different set of concerns as I look at that SUV. I look at it and my concern is I want safety, I want brand, I want luxury, I want comfort. Now that's, that's, those are the concerns of the end customer. Well, what about the concerns of the engineer? Well, an engineer is concerned with a whole variety of other aspects of the environment. In other words, how the car is built and assembled, its safety, the durability of the metals that it's used to con are being to constructed with, the types of tire pressure required to generate the speed that it needs to go, the pressures during a rollover, all those types of things. What about a, the, uh, the CEO or the chief financial officer of an organization? Well, what are his concerns looking at this car? So he looks at exactly the same car, but his concerns are what is the return on investment of this vehicle? You know, what are the cost of my supplies? What are my procurement cycles? Those types of things. So you can see it's the same vehicle, but it's addressing a completely different set of concerns with a different bunch of stakeholders. And that's really what we're trying to elaborate on uh, um, as we begin to understand the concerns and then represent those and using different views and models. So just keeping with our car example, what we have is this look at a model of the car. And within architectural terms, this is referred to as an architecture model. Assume that this is the vehicle. Right, and hopefully you can draw a vehicle there. Now, I need to cater for a variety of perspectives that look at that architectural model, that representation. So there are a variety of different stakeholders that are now going to be looking at this model. And the way that architecture works is that basically, my final representation, my final architectural model, must only include representations of the concerns of these stakeholders. No more, no less. If I have more representations in these little boxes than I have stakeholders, then I have exceeded expectations. I've built random stuff that is really of no value to any, to any particular stakeholder. So as you build out this model, it's key to understand that you're doing it for a specific set of concerns for a specific set of stakeholders. Right, so just to elaborate on the TOGAF technique on how we document those views, TOGAF introduces a concept called a viewpoint. So remember what we have here is a view, and I'll talk about how we represent that just now. But down here, TOGAF introduces this concept called a viewpoint. And the way you can describe what a viewpoint means is it's a schema or a recipe, an instruction set on how to assemble an, a, all your Lego blocks, your underlying building blocks, to be able to build out that view to address the concerns for that particular stakeholder. So the viewpoint says, well, okay, well, what are the concerns 
that I'm dealing with. Well, who's my stakeholder? And this is really what goes into the little uh, um, schema definition. Well, in order to address those concerns, what, what views do I want to represent? Okay, so I might want to represent a series of capabilities, or I might want to represent processes overlaid with hotspots, or I might want to represent dollar investment into certain people in my organization. So that's how we describe the view. Well, okay, well, if that's the view, how do I actually build that view? In other words, what meta model concepts do I use? And we've introduced the concept of a meta model in module one. So, in other words, well, in order to do that, I need to take a person. So, maybe I'll take the person concept, and maybe I'll take a role concept, and maybe I'll take a process concept. And these are the pieces that I string together into that particular view. Now, one of the other pieces, just to close off on, is well, what model am I going to use to represent that? Well, in this case, it might be a business anchor model. It might be a process model. It might be a functional decomposition model. So there's a variety of different types of models that you can use to be able to represent that view, assembling those business, business building block components together. So just to quickly to summarize how it bolts together, in order to address the concerns for this particular stakeholder, over here, all right, I'm going to represent that view for him. Well, how do I create that view? Well, he has the recipe that tells me how to create that view. There is concerns, there is a stakeholder, there's a description of the view. Right? There are all the building blocks that we're going to need to assemble to be able to develop that view. Oh, and by the way, that's the model that we're going to use to be able to assemble it. So in order to demonstrate these uh, views and viewpoints, we have some examples uh, within the additional resources section. So have a look through there. You'll be able to see how we've documented a viewpoint for each of those views and that'll provide a whole lot more clarity on, on the views and viewpoint section.